thinking this war would be our rite of passage, our great adventure. Let me tell you, it was no adventure. on our side, mostly. Down. We've got them on the run! 
fucking field gun, you take it! we found fear, and in war, the only true equalizer is death. Once in a while, we push hard enough that the light breaks through the clouds. It's in a world beyond the war glimmers. Just out of reach. The war is the world. And the world is the war. But behind every gun sight is a human being. We are those people. We are the jaded, we are the naive, we are the honorable, and the criminal. We are the bound for legend, and the lost to history. We are the knights of the sky, the ghosts in the desert, and the rats in the mud. These are our stories.
Officer. Towns in. Come on. You miss all the fun. All artillery! Fire! I've been looking at your papers. Don't worry about me, sir. I'm ready to do my bit for king and country. Listen, son, you find forward and reverse when you're told you'll do all right for me. Grab those, would you? Come and meet Big Bess. Woman of your dreams. And our new driver, boys. Like it when you swear, Finch. Hey, dudes. You've done this before. Done what before? Mind your business, with manners. Listen, don't worry. She'll look after you. Yeah. All right, boys. This is the big one. Our orders are to punch through the German line, destroying artillery positions as we go, Finch. Yes, sir. <laughs> After that, we'll advance on the French town of Cambrai, where I have been assured there is wine, women, and song. So you should enjoy that. Ha, my man is wine. Jesus. Are we in safe hands or what, boys? All right, my boys. Remember, boys, do your jobs, take care of each other. Big Bess will take care of you. May the Lord have mercy on our souls. We get through this together, Ray right, Edwards. Watch. Full ahead, driver! Every feather off that damn. Easy there. That pigeon could save your life. It's our only line of communication. Good up there, Edward. Yes. Starting to get the hang of it. What'd you do back home? Drove a car. I was a chauffeur. All stop. This is far enough. Infantry will go in the first whistle. Then we follow. Heavens above. You haven't seen anything like this. I have, I'm sorry to say. Listen, we're going to cut down the guns up by that windmill. Give our boys some room. That's our cue. Pull ahead! We recommend! Why oh, don't we tear the boys apart? Don't let those guests be for nothing. Move! They got one of ours! Ice front Take 
to lose. Watch your left, bitch. And let's get on and lend him behind.
Here it comes, boys. Nice serving with you, lads. You have the look of the devil, Townsend. Is that right? All we got out here is blind orders and chance. Which you'll do for us first, you reckon? I'm sick of your whip, McManus. Aye, aye, sir. It will start it up. <laughs> Back it up, big fist. <laughs> Give us a break. Give us a break. Come on. Ah, come on, miss. Come on. Stop. Stop, big fist. Stop. Stop. It stopped. Are you just going to stand there? Can't see more than 20 yards. We're pushing through. Edwards, I'll drive. You jump out and scout ahead. Don't be a hero, lad. Just do your job. Let's all get through in one piece, eh? If you get into trouble, we'll be right behind you, lad. up ahead. Looks well defended, too. Those field guns could quickly ruin our day. You go in, clear out those guns, we'll move up and finish the job.
Well, that's enough fun and games for a Tuesday. Get in and drive, Edwards. Let's get out of here. Good work, boys. You've done Pritch and Finchie proud. Now, let's get Bess out of here. So she needs new spark plugs. Check. Check how far that village is. Can you see it, son? Can you see the village? Yes. Yes, I see it. And what about our tanks? Can you see any of our tanks down there? Edwards? Yeah. But they're not ours anymore. Sounds like whatever best needs is down in that village. All right. Let's go, Edwards. Let's go. Good luck. going nowhere and he'll be dead by morning. We're fucked. What's it here? You're just going to abandon the mission, are you? Don't you get it? Finch, Pritchard, all of us. We've been fucked all along. Look, if that's what you want, McManus, then just go. Don't you ever talk to me like that. I've ran more fucking missions than you have had hot dinner, son. McManus, just fucking go. <sighs> well, so much for we're all in this together. All right. Find the parts, get the tank running, don't die. All of them. Now back to Bess. my way back there. There's no right way in a place like this. We'll find one. You're the driver. Ah. Nice work, boys. Uh, yeah. We did good, didn't we? Right, sir, that's the last of them. Let's get on moving. I've done everything right. Everything.
everything! My whole shot in life! All I've done is live my life by the manual! By the manual! What's wrong with you? You stupid, you stupid bloody machine! Come on, come on, Bess. Pull yourself together and work with me in. Fuck's sake, I thought you liked to bloody well fight! this far. And she'll get us all the way if we do our bit. to retake them. So we drive straight through. And what? Let them surprise everyone at the moment. So what's the plan? We have to take the initiative. If we hit them hard time, we can make a difference. All right, then. Let's bloody do it. Right. Keep moving. Keep them confused and off balance. And let's make them realize we're on our own.
So, what do we do now, driver? We walk. I have nothing left to bet, you idiot. The plane. <laughs> That's rich. Uh -huh. Oh, why the hell not? I've got you beaten anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. What have you got? Hmm? <laughs> Wipe your mouth, Blackburn. That wasn't supposed to happen. But you know, I'll be taking that plane anyway. What the bloody hell? You lost, I beat you. Mm. The thing is, Rackham, it's a very beautiful aeroplane and you're kind of a jackass. I beat you fair and square, goddammit. Stay the hell away from my kind. <laughs> oh, you bastard. You can't do this to me. I beat you. I beat you. My name's Clyde Blackburn. I'm a pilot and a gambler. I'm George Rackham. I'm George Bloody Rock and listen to me! You bastard! Keep off my aeroplane! If you asked me to name my biggest fault, I'd have to tell you. I'm just not a very honest person. Welcome aboard! I'm Wilson, by the way. You must be George Rackham! Sure, I'm Rackham. I'm your guy. Let's get this kite up in the air. You're George Rackham, son of the 4th Earl of Windsor. That's right. Hip, hip, go, the Bristol was everything it was advertised to be. A pure joy to fly. It was a crisp, sunny day, and everything would have been perfect had I only been alone.
boys. Who's next? Looks like there's only one left. That was too close for comfort. You can say that again. Is that the engine? Giving her the gun might have thrown something off. Repair what you can from up front. accidentally discovered where Germans were keeping their munitions for half the Western Front. And Wilson's pictures would help HQ launch a major assault. There was just one problem. I'm not sure about this. Oh, come on. We did a great thing. We'll get medals for this. We weren't even supposed to be there. When the commander sees these pictures, he won't care. We did a great thing. We can do it again. I'll make you a deal. If we pile up on this, then you need to promise me that you'll get me back in one piece. Sure thing. Promise. I need your word. Okay, I promise. Stay here. And don't cause any trouble. You know, I did like the guy. But he was kind of naive. Sir, you might want to take a look at these. Saints alive, your man must be one, one hell of a pilot. Before we knew it, we were back in the air. Our mission? To clear the way for the bombers so they could blow that fortress all to hell. First, we'd have to down the barrage blimps. Jesus, imagine being a lookout on a blimp. Bad luck, Fritz. Next, we'd have to deal with their anti-aircraft trucks. The assault was already in full swing when we got there. We'd have to deal with all those defenses, then escort our bombers to their target when they arrived. Tall order. Now we're actually doing this, it feels really dangerous. Trust me, and buckle yourself in, maybe. Down those blimps! Clear the way for our bombers! Easy enough. Watch my back. Position below! 
Wilson. Prepare to be left in awe. We've lost the bomber. They have to make it to the fortress or this mission is bust. I know, I know. bird was busted. She buried her nose in no man's land a half mile due west of where I went down. Wilson, the poor sap, didn't make it out. But that was his bad luck. I had more pressing problems. I'm just gonna say I've had plenty of practice moving quietly. Out the back of bars, bedroom windows, you don't need the details. Anyway, once those Germans were gone, I put my skills to work, heading west towards the British front, quiet as an alley cat. Between me and the British front were German trenches and German guns. Oh, and half the population of Berlin, all spoiling for a fight. My lucky day. The Brits must have been sitting down for tea and crumpets instead of shelling the Germans. Still, I had to get through to our side of the line before those guns started up again. Those trenches were packed full of the Kaiser's finest, but hopefully, most of them would be looking for trouble coming the other way. Hopefully.
dozen German machine guns at my back kinda encouraged me to keep my head down. No Man's Land was a maze of barbed wire, dead bodies, and debris. But I held my course. George Rackham, are you? Son of the fourth bloody Earl of Windsor. How <laughs> naive do you think I am? Oh. Oh. Let's get out of here. I was losing a lot of blood. I didn't have much time to get him back alive. Oh, almighty! The Germans aren't really known for the other now. They did everything they could to catch us. and said I was a no-good, lying son of a bitch. I brought him home because I think he's probably right. And I hate that fact more than I can tell you. This guy's a bloody hero! No, he's nothing of the sort. He's a cheat, a thief, and a liar. And he'll answer for his crimes. That's right, Blackburn. to the farm, are you? I'm going to speak up for you, you know, at the court-martial. It might do you some doubt good, it. but... Thanks. Wilson, wait! 
with me. I need a gunner. Over here. I'll, I'll do it. Rackham, let me help. You don't deserve to fly. Wilson, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die up there. Come on. Let's do this.
you and your big mouth. You okay? I'm okay. We need to take out that flat gun. Okay. I've got your back. story. A selfish man who risked his own life to save another, and in doing so, found he was saved himself. Things get mixed up in wartime, though, and you'll probably hear other versions. A rogue pilot who stole a plane, who killed his buddy, then lied, cheated, and murdered his way across half the Western Front, only to escape court-martial in the chaos of an air raid. But don't listen to any of that. What you heard from me is the truth. I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't. Would I?
Are you all right? We're ready for you to cut the cake. Wow, these are incredible. Yes, it was uh, an incredible time. <laughs> you looked very handsome in that uniform. That's not me, that's Matteo. Oh, of course. I'm sorry, Dad. Take as long as you need. No, no, it's okay, Tesoro. It's time I told you what happened to him. It was during our last battle together. Just a few days after our 21st birthday. My brother's battalion had been ordered to capture a fort deep into enemy territory. I wasn't going with him. I was part of a special unit with a different mission. Our task was to support Matteo's battalion. We were a proud unit. We changed the war for Italy. The Arditi. Fight up the mountain and take out anything targeting his unit. This hearing the story makes me worry for you. Don't worry. I was in a full suit of armor. Besides, the Aditi were proud volunteers. We would have done anything for Italy. A church was sitting at the base of the path. Enemy troops had fortified it. We had to fight them first. There was an artillery gun that was shelling us and Matteo's unit. I had to destroy it. And he was still heading to the fort? Right. I had to make sure he got there. Matteo and the entire Italian offensive was in danger as long as that artillery gun remained. So I had to take it down. safe was to blow up the gun itself. was one of the sweetest sights of the war for me. But there was no rest. 
I could see an anti-aircraft gun over the next ridge that was taking out our planes, and that was my next target. The gun was manned by Austro-Hungarian troops. I had to remove them before I could use the gun myself. I take down the last man. But then, I hear a noise that I will never forget. They were targeting Mateo's unit below me. So I do the only thing I can. It was me against an entire enemy bomber squadron. Enforcements. If those men were killed, our advance would be completely halted, and I would have lost Mateo. After the first few went down, they started targeting me. I had to stand my ground. When I got up, I thought I had died and gone to hell. They blew up the mountain. They buried us. They buried themselves. Oh God, Mateo. I had to find him. So I went down into that hell. It was my only choice. I had to find Matteo. He could have been anywhere.
started with the first thing that came through the fog. There were allies pinned inside lodges. I needed to save them. saw them. Armored vehicles coming from the enemy fort. But you didn't have your equipment anymore. There were crates of enemy weapons in the lodges that we scavenged and prepared ourselves with. of will we took out their firepower. The lodges were safe and I had to move on. You never said was Mateo in those lodges? No. The men said his unit had made it further up. Every part of me wanted to get out of the trenches. But I could hear Italian yelling. I knew my friends were trapped. Everywhere I looked, too late. I felt alone among ghosts. After a while, I couldn't even look at the bodies. He had to have made it to the fort. Some of the things I saw deserve. I had to convince myself I wasn't dead. Like what? Fire. into the fort. I could either go through the underground tunnels or above ground by circling around the back. Not through the front? I no longer had my armor. It was impossible. <laughs>
he never got older. And here I am, still. Who decides such things? Frederick Bishop? Oh, God. Hey, are you Frederick Bishop? Nope. He's dead, sorry. <laughs> but uh, isn't this your picture? I suppose so. Jack Foster. I I'm your new charge. No, you're not. You have to take this kid off me. <laughs> of course not. He came all this way just to see you. Frederick Bishop, the pride of Australia. Been lied about his age to get past conscription. You know Morse code? Yes. Follow me! How can we take the beach? We have the dreadnoughts this time. Plug your ears, kid. It's gonna be loud. Send these coordinates. Rear command only after I fire the signal flare. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Try to stay out of trouble. Have to get to the top of the beach. The robots don't stand a chance.
Think of that, huh? Kid, you lied your way into hell on earth. I just... You just wanted a statue of yourself in your town square. I said, I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> Come on, kid, get up. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna die. No, you're not. You're Australian. We're impossible to kill. Yeah. I guess so. Unless... Not a Kiwi, are you? <laughs> no. Now, first things first. Here, come on, stand up. Follow me. I'm in here. Just I'm out. Butt into your shoulder. That's it. Cheek against the butt. All right, that's it. Point it where you want to shoot. That's it. Okay. Get your feet apart a little bit. beginning to think I already lost my Australians. What can I do you for? Not you, the boy. We need a runner for the front lines. Really? No. I'm... Yes. No. You can't make the kid do it. You just stumble into a firefight and get killed. No, no, no. I can do it. No. I'll do it. Fine. You're here with me. And you. You will be running. I need to find a way past those on them. didn't. No, sure fucking didn't. <laughs> nice shot. Oh, well, you know, I just kind of saw him out there and I... <clears throat> you got falling lines across the board. <sighs> That's what I thought. Bishop, go tell rear command that we'll be moving up. Hey, don't worry. I can handle myself here. Head down. Got him. No open areas. Got it? Got it. Gotta to get to rear command. Wait. Where is everyone?
For those who didn't hear from a runner, the Allied position is lost. Artillery fire ordered to cover retreat to beach, shelling the village and outlying forts. Shit. Foster! Fucking Brits. Shelling their own position to cover retreat. from the rear. Save it, Mitchell. Help us here first. Prepare yourselves, men. Tell the village in the fort to cover us. We need to get out now. I, I sent men up to secure the fort. A dead man. Who went? Only those who volunteered. So naturally, all of them. Fucking kids. Well, you remember being his age, Foster. Fuck. I gotta get that kid. Go. I'll pretend I didn't see you. This isn't on you. Of course it is. One more death for me to live with. Go, go, you don't have much time. Storming a fort by myself, and I called Foster an idiot. What, again? You sure you didn't just want to shoot me? Come on. Let's get you out of here. This place is about to come down any moment. No, we can't leave. There are still hostiles coming, and we can't outrun them with our wounded. You get going then. I'll cover your retreat. The bishop is still. I'll make it look like I'm capturing the fort. It'll be enough distraction. Once you get past Allied lines, send up a flare. Let me know you're safe. I'll make my retreat then. I'll oh, say so you're disobeying orders now. Well, I assume you did to come here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, proper 
Aussie now. Gotta look the part. Right. Up and at him, lads. Let's go. This is it, I guess.
the Arabian Desert, a vast ocean of drifting sands and scorched, sun-baked rocks. Beneath these endless dunes, oil, the lifeblood of our new mechanical century. For more than 400 years, the Ottoman Empire has ruled these lands, controlling all that's to be found here. But the Ottomans do not rule unopposed. Small bands of Bedouin rebels have united to overthrow the empire. They strike without warning and then vanish into the desert. Fighting alongside them is a lone British officer whose exploits have earned him wide renown. The world has taken to calling this man Lawrence of Arabia. In the desert, you rely on good planning, but you also hope for a dash of luck. And luck was with us when we learned of a recently derailed Ottoman train carrying a most interesting piece of cargo. A small patrol had joined the Ottomans who survived the crash. Together, they guarded the wreckage and waited for reinforcements. A lone fighter has just one advantage over a large enemy force. A lone fighter can move unseen. We strive to do what we think is right and push through those who would stop us from achieving this, no matter the cost. You did not think we would be fast enough to catch you here, did you? Lawrence of Arabia. Actually, I was rather depending on it. Eh, Lawrence? Ah. Well, this is very clever. Now the hunter becomes the hunted. So who might you be? How enchanting you are, my dear. Ahmed. I'll show you enchanting. 
If it weren't for you, I'd be free. Free, is it? You'll be free when you're dead. And I'm happy to tell you, the Empire intends to grant you all this freedom very soon. Even now, an engine of destruction scours this desert, obliterating your allies, your families, your homes. Soon there will be nowhere to run! Oh. that you know, and all that you love, will be ashes. You will all be free, to die. Oh, oh you animal! Zara! Oh. Now I understand that you would like nothing more than to strip the flesh from that man's feet and send him off into the desert naked to die. But think about it. You're right. I'm sorry. My friend here, she can be a little brusque. You're going to tell me how to lie to your train so we can lure it into a trap and destroy it. <laughs> Impossible. To even begin to talk to that train, you would need an entire book of communication codes. Oh, like this one. You can never stop the progress of machines. One day, the whole world will take your lands and the precious black gold beneath its sands. We shall see, my friend. Of course, obtaining the codebook was not enough. To destroy this Iron Dragon, this Canavar, as the Ottomans have named it, we had to send it three encrypted messages to make it to stand down. There were Ottoman outposts scattered along the railroad tracks. The commanders there carried high-priority message capsules. We had to use those to send our orders. Infiltrating the village wouldn't be easy. A full detachment of Ottoman soldiers had occupied it. The Ottomans had chosen an isolated location for their desert outpost. It seemed lightly defended. It was also well stocked with arms and equipment. The ancient ruins were all that remained of a civilization now lost to time. The Ottoman Empire brought in the modern world with a host of armored vehicles and field guns. Three commanders to eliminate, three personal message capsules to be stolen and then sent with our false orders. How Zara tackled this dangerous and audacious mission was up to her. The Bedouin treasured their horses, and in return, those animals granted their riders unparalleled speed and mobility. A single order wouldn't be enough. Yeah. Ottoman protocol required the message to be received in triple before the train would acknowledge it as genuine.
We were putting a great deal of trust in Zara's capability. But I had complete confidence that she would carry the day. See, the message had already been sent, my dear. <clears throat> no, not the message you would have wanted. El Orans was such a good host. It almost seemed rude to escape. I made sure to note the location of Lawrence's camp, of course. Which means... the train knows too. Twice. You told that train everything was clear. But... I told it exactly where to attack. The beast has your scent, my dear. And it's coming to slaughter you and your little band of rebels. First, the firestorm from the cannon. Then, up close with the troops to slaughter any survivors. of Arabia dies tonight. Away just in time. Till Kitchy was a fool to think we'd ever stay after he escaped. The carnival won't stop hunting us. No, it won't. Let me think. The train's coming a long way. So it'll have to stop to take on water. That's where we strike. Agreed. I'll deal with any sentries, then rig explosives on the track. Yes, and I'll rally our fighters. When I blow the lines, the, the train will be trapped. So when you hear the blast, you need to attack them with everything you have. It's good. But you know that there's a chance the men may not come. You may set off those explosives and find you're out there all alone. You know that. I guess I won't know either way until I set it off. Yes, no.
makes plans and God laughs. As it turned out, the small town where we would ambush the train had a significant enemy presence. Those troops would have to be dealt with before the explosives could be set. Those troops in the village had to be dealt with before we could push on with our plan to destroy the train.
vengeance can be a sweet or bitter brew. How did you find it, Zara? Then you're right, we do need to think bigger, act bigger. Maybe even the Suez Canal. Tell me, what do you know about battleships? will be over. The war to end all wars will be won by one side or the other. The guns will rust, grass will grow, and there'll be nothing left of any of this. The land will heal itself, as everything does in the end. We'll be long gone by then, but maybe not forgotten. History only remembers one in a thousand of us. Then the future will be filled with stories of who we were and what we did. How we lived, how we fought, and how we died. When this is all over and the war is won, they will remember us. But until that day comes, we will stand. We will look death in the eye. And we will fight.